हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ए पी जी पाठशाला माई नेम इज़ डॉक्टर नीरज अग्रवाल एंड आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन यूनिवर्सिटी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ होटल एंड टूरिज्म मैनेजमेंट पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी चंडीगढ़ आई एम प्रजेंटिंग लेक्चर ऑन मेड्यूल टाइटल्ड बेसिक कॉमोडिटीज यूज इन बेकरी अंडर द पेपर टाइटल्ड फूड प्रोडक्शन operations and management the objectives of the modules will be to know the different types of flours available to understand different forms in which fat is available to understand what gluten is to know the functions of liquids and eggs to know the functions of different types of sugar available to understand the different types of leavening agents to know the functions of salt now firstly i will discuss with introduction commodities play a vital role in cooking and baking it is important to know about the basic commodities which are used in bakery and pastry the first one is flour it comes from the word flour which means best part of the meal that is portion of grain left after milling and screening out the large particles of grain flour is obtained when we mill grains and pulses milling can be of various degrees to give a particular structure to the product and the usage of each mill product will be different from the other for example the milling of wheat grain can produce bulgur cocos semolina and flour in bakery when we refer to flour always means refined flour unless specified as whole wheat flour wheat is a member of grass family and is botanically named as triticum commercially wheat is classified into three border sections triticum vulgar used for making baker's flour triticum durum for making pastas and triticum compactum also known as clubbed wheat used for making low gluten flours a single grain consists of three layers bran germ and endosperm now we'll discuss with a different types of flour obtained from wheat the first one is whole wheat flour also known as atta in india it is the whole milled wheat kernel gram flour it is usually found in usa the wheat kernels is separated into various components such as endosperm germ and bran brown flour it is almost 85% of the grain millet where some amount of bran is extracted it is nutritious as it has high percentage of germ strong flour also known as high protein flour weak flour also known as soft or cake flour all purpose flour The all-purpose flour is a blend of flours and has medium strength. Now, pastry flour, it is a very finely ground polished flour of soft wheat kernels. Self-raising flour, this flour is usually of medium strength and contains baking powder in a proportion. This flour is commonly used to make afternoon cookies and also called as scones. now gluten free flour in this the examples are amaranth it is a green leafy vegetable related to spinach and beets tiny seeds of this plant are often ground into nutritious flour rice flour it is from rice pulse flour it is obtained from pulses chickpea flour this flour is very commonly used in india and mediterranean countries maize flour popular in mexico this flour is made from 
cooked maize corn and then ground it, also known as masa harina. Buckwheat. Buckwheat is also known as kutu ka atta in India. Chestnut. It is smooth, shelled nut, usually roasted and ground into flour. Barley flour has low gluten content with mild flavor. Millet. It can also grow in areas which do not receive much rainfall. Soya bean flour. Higher fat and higher protein flour having strong distinctive nutty flavor. Get it from sunflower. Now we discuss about types of flour and their protein content. Flour protein contents whole wheat flour 13.3%, semolina 12.3%, straight hard flour 11.8%, all purpose flour 10.5%, soft flour 9.7% and cake flour 7.5%. Now we are going to discuss about raising agents. Some common raising agents used in bakery are as follows. Baking powder. Baking powder is used as a raising agent for a number of dough and batters such as cakes, scones, puddings and biscuits. Baking is usually a single acting agent which means it reacts as soon as it comes into contact with any liquid. One should always store baking powder in airtight containers free from any moisture because slight presence of moisture will start reaction in it. Bicarbonate of soda. It is also known as baking soda or bicarbonate of soda or cooking soda which is used in a variety of dishes such as biscuits, batters, and puddings etc. It usually reacts in the presence of any acidic medium. The shelf life of baking soda can easily be around 3 years if stored in a cool dry place. Cream of tartar is a fine white powder which is extracted from the tartaric acid that crystallizes in wine cask during the fermentation process of grapes. It is also known as potassium salt and has number of uses. It should be stored in airtight container as it has ability to absorb moisture. Yeast. It is a tiny living fungus that thrives on sweetness, warmth and moisture. As the yeast eats, it erects carbon dioxide and alcohol. The carbon dioxide causes the raise in the baked products. Alcohol ev evaporates during baking get helps in the development of flavor in the bread yeast is also available in two for us compressed and active dry action dry is a more concentrated form so only half the weight of compressed yeast is required and they are generally stored at 5 degrees centigrade it has action from 5, 15 to 20 degrees centigrade. Best growth is from 20 degrees centigrade to 32 degrees centigrade. Reaction slows at 38 degrees centigrade and yeast is killed at 60 degrees centigrade. Now I will discuss about the fats. These are essential components of most bakery products and its quality and quantity may affect both maddening responses of the dough and quality of the finished products. These are manufactured from vegetable oils to give 100% fats which have good shortenings and or coming property. There are three broad groups. White which is also known as compound fats, a general purpose fat used for making pastry and enriching bread. Yellow fat much softer in consistency, this is a high grade fat most suited to blend with margarine or butter in make of cakes. High ration, this is a high graded fat containing lecithin to increase in emulsifying power mainly used in high liquid sugar recipes with special high ratio cake flour. Oils, oils are liquid fats. They are often used as 
shortenings in baking because they spread through a batter or dough too thoroughly and shorten too much. Their usefulness is limited primarily to greasing pans, deep frying donuts and serving as a wash for some kinds of rolls. Different types of vegetable oils are as follows. They are corn oil, cotton seed oil, sunflower oil, groundnut oil, palm oil, rapeseed oil, mustard oil, olive oil, vegetable oil. Corn oil, it is made from corn or maize and has a smoking point of 230 degrees centigrade and is more suitable for deep frying. Cotton seed, it is commonly used in cooking and also has a very high smoking point like corn oil. Sunflower oil, most of the vegetable oils are made from seeds and sunflower oil is no exception. Groundnut oil, also known as peanut oil, it is suitable for deep frying and has a high smoking point of 225 degrees centigrade. Palm oil, it is made up of seeds of the fruits of palm and has a reddish color because of the presence of beta carotene. It fades away when oil is heated. Wrap seeds, also known as canola, it is the healthiest of oils for cooking. Olive oil, it is made from olives and commonly used in Mediterranean countries. This oil has low smoking point of 165 degrees centigrade. Hence, it is not suitable for deep frying. Another kind of fat is lard. Lard is the rendered fat of logs. Because of its plastic quality, it was once highly valued for making flaky persuades. Since the development of modern shortenings, it is not often used in the bakery. Clarified butter is a process where the water and the milk solids are removed so that the butter becomes more stable and can be used for cooking without changing its properties. Clarified butter has higher smoking point because the milk solids are removed. Another kind of fat is margarine. This is an emulsion of water and oil. It mainly contains vegetable oils but at times it may contain a mixture of both animal and vegetable oils. These oils are then saturated by addition of hydrogen which makes it more suitable and increases its melting point. The handling of this fat becomes very easy in warmer conditions and it can cream well to give more structure and volume to the baked products. Margarine is mainly used in pastry work. Now I will discuss about the usage of fats and oils. Fats and oils are used in baking cakes to moisten the batter and to improve the keeping quality of the cake. Fats have an ability to retain certain amount of air during preparation stages. Fats and oils give richness, variety of textures and smoothness to the foods which otherwise may be too dry to eat. Now I will discuss about sweeteners. Sweeteners are the soul of deserts. Sugar is one of the most important ingredient used in confectionery and its usage is not only limited to providing sweetness but it has various other uses such as altering the texture of products, giving colors to the baked goods. Sugar also delays the coagulation of proteins in eggs and promotes the aeration in products. It is available in various forms such as grain sugar, icing sugar, breakfast sugar and this categorization is basically done on the shape and the size of sugar crystals. Sugar also lowers the freezing point in ice creams and hence we must be careful 
in adding the amount of sweeteners in ice creams. Different types of sugar used in baking are as follows. Granulated sugar. Sugar crystals usually obtained from sugar cane. This is the regular white sugar. This is used in wiping eggs, making a sugar syrups, cooking sabayon over double boiler. Castor or breakfast sugar. It is commonly used in breakfast for tea and coffee. It is a small, even graded sugar crystals. Icing sugar. Granulated sugar is crushed into fine powder and has a small percentage of corn starch added to keep it smooth and free flowing. It is used as icing for cakes and pastries. Icing sugar can also be shifted on the top of dry baked sweet products as a garnish. Brown sugar. This is granulated sugar which is available in variety of shades of brown. The darker brown sugar is known as Demara sugar. Golden syrup. It is a thick amber colored liquid obtained from sugar during the refining process. Corn syrup. It is chemically refined syrup made from kernels. It is very sweet and contains high amount of fructose. Maple syrup. It is a natural sweetener and is sap of maple tree. It is boiled down to thick syrup. Ninth, treacles. It is the leftover of sugar cane juice refining as is stronger than golden syrup but less than molasses. Honey is a natural sugar obtained from beehives. The color and flavor of honey will vary with its sources. Date sugar. It is very sweet in nature and obtained from drying and pulverizing dates. Palm sugar. Palm sugar is traditionally made from the sap of palmyra palm or the date palm. It is extensively used in Asian cooking. Jaggery. Commonly known as good and prepared from sugar cane. Molasses. It is the byproduct of sugar from sugar cane. The color and flavor of molasses is more stronger and darker. Liquid glucose. It is obtained by threatening, treat, sorry, treating the corn slurry by acid, a process known as hydrolysis. The liquid glucose contains the dextrin gum, which retards the crystallization of sugar. Now we discuss about liquids. Liquids are essential for Glutide formation, the amount used in erratical to the type of product desired. In this, the first one is water. It is the basic liquid in baking, especially in breads. Honey, egg, butter contribute moisture to your dough or batter. Milk and dairy products. Milk is a major ingredient in our diet. It is particularly high in calcium but it is also fairly good in fat too. Milk has many nutrition contents such as proteins, fats and carbohydrates. Milk also has a sugar called lactose. Now, we will discuss about the different types of milk. It is important to know various kinds of milk used in cooking, especially in the pastry, the type of milk plays a very important role. Whole milk it can be cow, buffalo, sheep or even goat. This milk contains at least 3.5% of butter, fat, which gives it the wholesome taste. Homogenized milk. This is the best milk to use for tea or coffee as the fat does not separate and float on top. Skimmed milk. The fat from the whole milk is removed by the centrifugal force. The fat from the milk is separately sold as the cream. Buttermilk. It is the byproduct obtained while making butter. When the butter is churned, the whey which is left behind is known as buttermilk. Dehydrated milk. This is the whole milk from which the water is removed by either spray drying or by roll drying process. 
Milk powder is used in breads or cookies dough to provide enrichment. Condensed milk. This is reduced milk in which sugar and stabilizers have been added to produce a thick, viscous, creamy liquid. Condensed milk is used in various cakes and pastries. Dried milk. This is obtained by cooking milk over slow heat till most of the liquid evaporates and the remaining solid mass is sold off as milk solids. Now, I will discuss about cream. Cream is the butter fat content of whole cow's milk separated from water. The principal difference between various type of creams that is single cream, double cream, wiping cream, clotted cream and sewed cream is the balance between the water and butter fat. Some of the common types of creams used in confectionery are as follows. Single cream. This cream contains not less than 18% butter fat. It cannot be whipped as it contains too little butter fat. Double cream. This cream contains not less than 45% butter fat. It cannot be whipped too much as it turns to butter. Whipping cream. This cream contains not less than 38% butter fat. It is perfect for whipping. Clotted cream. This cream contains not less than 55% butter fat. It is already very thick so it can be used as it is and not whipped. This cream is served with afternoon cookies called scones. Sour cream. This is single cream which contains 20% butter fat but has a soaring culture in it. Acidulated cream. This is cooking cream with addition of lime juice to make it sour. Now we are going to discuss about egg and its functions in baking. It acts as a binding agent. Eggs are used as binding agent, for example, brioche. Leavening agent. This property is exhibited by the eggs. When we whip the egg white, the air gets entrapped inside the egg white and hence the egg acts as leavening agent, for example, sponge. Coating agent. Egg acts as coating agent in various dishes. Emulsifying agent. Eggs act as emulsifying agents that helps to produce smooth batter. Thickening agent. Eggs act as thickening agent. Fat in yolk acts as shortening. This is important in products that are low in other fats. Eggs are also used for decoration and garnishes of egg dishes and egg forms an important part of breakfast menu. Now I will discuss about a certain important points in handling eggs. Except only fresh eggs. Interest should be shown in using clean shelled eggs because if the shell is porous it may be contaminated from salmonella bacteria. The eggs should be stored at 2 degree centigrade to 5 degree centigrade. Do not keep the shells on service table. Check the egg shells before simmering. Do not store the eggs wash for more than 24 hours. Store unwashed with the pointed end down in the egg tray in the refrigerator. Wash carefully all the equipments while handling with eggs. Now, I will discuss about leavening agent. Leavening is the production or incorporation of gases in a baked product to increase volume and to produce shape and texture. The gases must be retained in the product until the structure is set enough to hold its shape. Exact measurement is important as slight differences can produce major defects in the final product. Chemical leaveners. The examples can be baking soda or soda bicarbonate. When moisture and acid are present, soda releases 
carbon dioxide that leavens the product. Acid ingredients that react are honey, molasses, butter, milk, fruits, cocoa powder and chocolate etc. Baking powder. It is a mixture of soda and acid to react with. They do not depend on acid ingredients in the formula. Baking ammonia. It is chemical ammonium carbonate. It is decomposes during baking to release carbon dioxide. Only heat and moisture is required for it to work. Now, air. It is incorporated into a batter by two methods. One, creaming method and second, foaming method. This air expands during baking and leavens the product. Now, creaming method, beating fat and sugar together to incorporate air. And foaming method, whipping or whisking eggs with or without sugar to incorporate air. Now, I will discuss about salt. Salt enhances flavor. It also strengthens gluten structure and makes it more stretchable. It also helps in improving texture of breads. It inhibits yeast growth, important for controlling fermentation and prevents growth of undesirable wild yeast. Now, I will discuss about chocolate and cocoa. Derived from cocoa or cocoa beans, these are high in starch and when added to the formula, it is sometimes considered part of the flow proportion. Now spices, those used in bakery are cinnamon, nutmeg, maize, ginger, cardamom, allspice, aniseed and poppy seeds. They are used in small quantities. So now I will summarize this module. Baked goods have been around for thousands of years. It was a highly famous art as Roman citizens loved baked goods and demanded for them frequently for important occasions such as feasts and weddings etc. The good commodities plays a vital role in the quality of baked products. The different types of flours are used for different products so as to provide real texture and color to the product. Different types of sugars, fats and yeasts are used to give variation in the products. Thank you and have a nice day.